Another great day in Kathmandu. What a crazy city. And uh, they said, look, we're trying to raise money to build a spinal unit in Nepal. Do you want to get involved with trying to raise some awareness about it? At the time, I was still lying in bed in, in hospital, and I thought, it'd be great if just some good could come out of this whole situation. Really embrace the journey and each other and open up tour and it's going to happen anyway whether you like it or not whether you think you're close and you've got secrets they're all going to come out by the end of the trip yeah the, the whole reason we were there was to raise money for the spinal unit and i think the reason that i had returned was because of the effect that visit to the spinal unit had had on me the previous year. So I was very, um, I, really, I really wanted everyone who was going to go and climb to raise money for this spinal unit to visit it first and realise what they're raising money for and the importance of it because I knew it would have an impact on them the same way it did on me. The, in our centre, the main uh, cause of spinal cord injury is fall they fall from the trees and followed by the road, tra road traffic injuries. And the stigma is like that you become disabled, so you can't do anything. Normally they don't have a uh, good economic background. So I think uh, they have to spend their whole life as a paralyzed, as a disabled. Uh, I became involved with the Neverest charity a few years ago and we thought uh, it would be an ideal uh, conjunction in a way given the misfortune of Ed's accident but the good fortune of his recovery as to whether he would wish to be involved in uh, efforts to improve rehabilitation for such injured patients. The centres make you know the spine injured people physically socially and psychologically fit and also you know these centers have very good networking of the spinal cord injured people so when they come here they feel like oh i am not the only one there are many people who have such type of problem the um, spinal injury center being built uh, it means a lot to me. I had a spinal injury uh, myself about nine years ago and I was really lucky. But I know how important that rehab stage is and that aftercare. As a physio, it's exactly the kind of facility that you would want to set up. It was so logical, the fact that it would take people who had had a life-changing injury and actually take them to a place where they were probably better off having had that injury than without it was incredible. Just finished at the spinal unit. Um, It, it always gets me a bit. Get choked up a couple of times, you know, walking into the ward and seeing it's the same anywhere else in the world. You, kids lying there with their mums next to them. Um, it's pretty emotional stuff. Kathmandu Domestic Airport was shut, so it meant that we had to get a seven hour bus journey to. Ramachamp, which meant we, an airport that was closer to Lukla. Um, and I kind of knew what we were in for in terms of a bus journey in Nepal because the roads are shocking and I'd done it the year before. Um, so we got up at 2 a.m., loaded all our stuff onto the bus outside and that's when it really felt like the adventure was starting.
we turned up at Ramachamp Airport ready to get on a plane to Lukla. Lo and behold, the flight was cancelled. <laughs> so we spent the day in the airport playing cards um, and eating dalbat. So I suppose I'm here as representing Everest. Um, I have to admit I'm also here for selfish reasons. Uh, I, I love Nepal. Uh, I was here last year. So uh, it's a challenge, a uh, personal challenge. Mera Peak is the highest trekking uh, peak of Nepal. So the, for the Meravik trekking, so it takes about uh, 17 days. You know, I'm a parent to, to four kids, to Cameron, Elliot, Mackenzie and Skye. Um, and they're digital natives, they're growing up, you know, in a very different way to, to the way that I grew up. If I can um, inspire them after this trip to want to get outside more, to want to do a bit more hiking with Dad and to uh, get out in the fresh air, that will be a huge uh, benefit from this trip. Um, I realised that you know, my aches and pains and things that were sore, the tiredness that was setting in, there's nothing probably compared to what Ed was going through. So you just kind of pick yourself up, but you have those quiet moments in your head every now and then going, God, this hurts, like, oh, what are you doing here? Do you need to keep pushing yourself? But, um, you know, the pain subsides and you know you can keep pushing on it. Every time I go to the mountains, I seem to find a bit of peace and it allows me the time to process some stuff that I need to process. So I've been on a bit of a journey with uh, trying to get myself back to health after some mental health issues um, that arose through a brain injury that I suffered playing uh, rugby. Yeah, it's been very beneficial so far. Now on to uh, Donkey the Day. <laughs> Just stop for lunch in a place that looks like Jurassic Park. It is unbelievable. There's monkeys in the trees all around us. Um, just a 400 meter climb to go until we're till we're our next uh, next stop um, at 3,200 meters. The fact I was having to concentrate so hard on every step and it dragging out for 12 hours, combine that with the physical exertion, meant that it was really, really hard to concentrate. Um, and I started losing my footing and then it started getting dark before we got to the next tea house. So head torches came on, it was getting cold. You could tell that our guides, Big Raj and the others were starting to get stressed because they realized it was pretty dangerous and um, there was a hairy few hours.
Well, Ed invited me, and I stupidly said yes before I realised quite what I was letting myself in for. <laughs> um, but in truth, he told me a lot about the people that he met here and the spinal unit in Nepal and about making connections with them, and that's something I was really keen to get involved with. From visiting the spinal unit, it was an incredible experience, and I was very touched by all of the people there and the amazing work that they're doing, and I hope to be involved with that in the future. I was thinking a lot about Lois, um, a lot about my family, a lot about everyone that's helped me get to this point so far. The surgeon, the physios, mostly my family and my friends and, and, and Tom, you know, he's sadly not with us anymore, but I walk with them every step of the way. And they're the only reason that I can keep going. Together, though, I know we will do it for all of them. It's really instilled a load more confidence into me. I feel um, feeling really positive, um, and to be sat here in this with these surroundings. I mean, when I put my poles down today, I, I think I might have been in the best headspace I've ever been. My mind was just empty and I was just happy and I was looking up at these mountains and they really do dwarf anything that's going on in your life. They make your problems seem so small and um, it's a moving, humbling place to be. camp um, minus 30 it's going to be tomorrow night get up at 1am and we have a 12 hour push to the summit let's hope everything goes okay I never imagined the mountains. I mean, every time you turn your head, there is an incredible peak, an incredible glacier. It's really a paradise for mountaineering. God, I just feel so lucky to be here. I can't believe it. It's like a dream. Two and a half years ago, I've been told I'm never going to walk again. This is for everyone who's been told they can't do something, or they don't think they can do something. You can. You can. Just believe it. Tent. It's not warm. Uh, we're just gearing up. 
had some porridge, getting ready to set off on my summit attempt. Davies managed to get seven hours sleep um, and we lost Kieran to up to sickness. He had to go down last night. Ed was ill as well, but he pulled through it. So fingers crossed, we'll get to the top. See you on the other side. Just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. Really wasn't much else going through my head at that point. How are you feeling? <sighs> <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Remember my uh, question won't be in the video. <laughs> I'm feeling <laughs> But <laughs> we're gonna get there. I was still bent double on my poles until I came sort of within sort of four or five steps of the summit. And then weirdly, just everything sort of became clear and quiet. And I remember there was just a melee of ropes as everyone was huddled on this small summit. And um, I took one step and looked up and saw Rich, um, my best mate, and. Um, I, it, it still feels like a dream. I still can't believe that we were actually stood up there. The moment yesterday when we reached the summit was the hardest thing I've ever done, but the most, without doubt, the most rewarding thing. Um, you know, the looks on everyone's faces, just a fulfillment and um, group coming together, 14 people that didn't really know each other at all. I had that dream to take him all the way to the top of Mera Central. And then so I, I think uh, dream came true. I'm very happy to make his trip successful. Thank you. To me, it doesn't make any difference who got to the top and who didn't out of that group. You know, um, the, the end goal might have been the summit of Mira Peak, but actually the real goal was getting everyone to Nepal to raise lots of money for a spinal unit. Um, and we couldn't have got to the points that we did without those four people anyway. Um, so they played just as big a part as any of us did the, in, in summiting. I'm so proud of everyone. And that was uh, by far the hardest thing I've ever done. Not just getting to the summit, but getting to high camp. The whole two weeks, we've still got more to go. About six to nine months ago, my, my life started unravelling quite quickly and uh, I managed to lose a lot of control and Ed invited me along because he told me all the, the benefits of coming out to the mountains and how they can help me, help me get back parts of my life that I've missed, parts of my life that I've lost and I jumped at the chance really. I think being in the mountains being with the group of people that we've been with has been incredibly beneficial to me. And having summited Mera Peak, I can truly say that I've learned a lot of life lessons that I can take through to the next stages of my life and gain back that control that I lost and become the person that I can be. And then we got to the small matter of Chatrilar Pass, which is um, the same height as Mont Blanc, highest mountain in Europe. And we just had to cross over that to get back down into Lukla. We had this one big challenge left and then the snow set in and the ice set in and it just became really dangerous considering how tired we were. For me, this has provided a, a goal, a target that 
with a bit of with a bit of effort, sweat and toil is achievable. Uh, it's a nice balance between individual work and also teamwork. Uh, I've been struggling to find that probably a little bit uh, over the last, certainly over the last eight years. I'd say. Um, so it's given that aspect in space. I'm not even sure if I would ever attempted that when I was able-bodied. So to think I've now achieved something, considering I'm disabled, it's the first time that I've achieved something that I didn't think may be possible before I was disabled. It's been a very moving experience and one I'll, I'll hold on to for a long time. That's about all I've got to say at the moment because I'm still absolutely shattered.